so in the previous reading let us say we wanted to forecast we wanted to forecast returns on a particular stock okay, so let us say returns on starbucks so one way of uh, forecasting returns on a particular stock you could have percentage returns on S&P 500, and you can plot percentage returns on <coughs> Starbucks, and then you try to plot that relationship and see if it gives you any significant results. So these type of scenarios in the previous reading we call them as linear regression. But will you agree that there would be apart from S&P 500 returns, there would be multiple other variables that might have an impact? on the returns on a particular stock so you might have uh, you know data like the percentage uh, gdp growth now since their business is highly diversified you will have to look at gdp growth of american region which is about 70 odd percent of the revenue and gdp growth of european region and gdp growth of cap region so gdp growth would be one variable other variable would be other variable would be maybe something like uh, percentage change in number of stores okay, which is more stock specific and less on the macro side or you could have multiple variables in these lines and then using all these variables you build a regression and then these type of regressions would be referred to as multiple regressions so most of the econometric analysis in finance especially when you're dealing with macroeconomics uh, data you would come across multiple regression multiple times and therefore it's important that you learn to interpret how to make use of them how to correct them for assumption violations and then how to interpret results that you derive based on these multiple regressions so let's look at a uh, few examples so this is uh, a sample regression equation that we have so we have b0 which is your intercept first slope independent variable second beta coefficient second independent variable so on and so forth and then we also have a error term this part uh, it will help if you write down so intercept term this is the value of dependent variable with an assumption that all independent variables are equal to 0 so in this equation if x1 was 0 x2 was 0 all the x values were 0 then y would be equal to b0 which is the interpretation of intercept term slope coefficient is the estimated change in the dependent variable for one unit change in independent variable most importantly keeping everything else constant because if you allow all the x values to change parallelly then of course the changes in y variable would be more than that particular slope term okay, so to an example maybe you first you could write down this but make sure you emphasize on the word constant okay writing so that we slow down plus you internalize this better so in the context of this example let us say that uh, b0 is 5 b1 is 2 this is 3 and let's say this is 2 now let me assign some values to x so let's say this is right now 2 this is right now 3 and let's say this is 4 let's assume there are no values in between then we can easily find out what is the y value so it would be 5 here plus 4 plus 9 and plus 8 so that's 
so y1 would be equal to 26 now let us assume let us assume that everything else is constant but instead of 2 now it becomes 3 everything else remains constant instead of 2 it becomes 3 now what will happen is your y value will become how much 28 so the interpretation of this b1 is that if everything else is kept constant and if the x value changes by 1 then the y value will change by 2 is that okay